Hey guys, why did Jesus come to earth 2,000 years ago? I mean, we know that he didn't just start to exist when Mary gave birth to him, but he always existed. For example, we read in John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, meaning Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Now, there are also many other passages in Scripture that clearly shows us that Jesus Christ was always there with God the Father in the beginning. But that's not our focus on this video. In this video, we're only going to focus on the question of why did Jesus come to earth 2,000 years ago? And why did He come in the flesh as a human? The answer to this question is far more important than you or I might even think. And we need to know the answer. So in this video, that's what we're going to talk about. Let's get to it. Alright, so why was it important for Jesus Christ to come down to earth in the flesh as a human being? Well, you might say, well, Daniel, it's because he had to come as the Messiah to die in our place so that we can be saved. And yes, you're right, but there are also many other reasons. And let me explain those reasons to you. Let's start with the first one. For representative obedience. The first human, Adam, sinned against God. He was disobedient and it brought sin into the world. And it also separated us from God. And to repair this relationship between us and God, to restore it, God sent Jesus Christ to come down to earth as a human, to live a life without sin. And Paul talks about this in Romans 5 verse 18 and he says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. So when you celebrate Christmas, remember, Christmas is not about Santa Claus or just getting presents, but it's about Jesus Christ that came down to earth to live a perfect, pure life without sin, so that He can carry your sins on the cross and die in your place so that you will be saved, so that you can have eternal life if you accept this gift. And this is a gift, a free gift to all men and women. Verse 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. And this is why Paul calls Jesus Christ the second Adam in 1 Corinthians 15 and call Adam the first man and Christ the second man in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 47. So Jesus had to be a human to represent us and obey God perfectly without sin. To be a substitute sacrifice. If Jesus wasn't human, He could not have come and die in our place on the cross. He couldn't have paid the price for our sins. Hebrew 2 verse 17 says, Therefore, in all things he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. God is just. And to be able to save us, he had to make Jesus in every way that we are so that He might become an acceptable sacrifice, a substitute sacrifice. So it is important to know that if Jesus Christ was not fully human, He couldn't have died for our sins. To be the one and only mediator between God and humans. When sin came into the world, we as humans were alienated from God and we needed somebody to bring us back to a healthy relationship with God. And only Jesus Christ qualifies for that role. The Bible says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, 
the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So to be able to fulfill this role as mediator between God and humans, we needed somebody to be both fully God and fully human. And only Jesus Christ fulfills that role because Jesus is 100% God and 100% human. Now that might be hard for some people to understand, but for humans, of course, it is impossible. But for God, it is not. To be our example in life. Jesus Christ came down to earth to be our example of how we should live our lives here on earth. And our goal as true Christians should always be to be like Jesus Christ. In 1 John 2 verse 6, he says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Do you really live your life according to the example that Jesus Christ left us? Hebrew 12 says, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Are you a sweet-smelling aroma for other people? Does it feel great for other people to be around you? If you sometimes struggle with this, then just ask yourself, what would Jesus Christ do in this situation right now? The pattern for our redeemed bodies. When Jesus Christ died, and then after three days when He rose from the grave, He rose in a different body. And Paul explains this in 1 Corinthians 15 and says, Jesus rose in a body that was imperishable or spiritual body, that is raised in glory. And this new body that Jesus had is the pattern for what our bodies will look like one day when we are raised from the grave. Jesus is the first fruit, according to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 23. And in verse 49 it says, And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So Jesus had to be raised as a human being to be the firstborn of the dead. And Colossians 1 also talks about this in verse 17 and 18 by saying, And He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, listen to this, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He may have preeminence. To sympathize as a high priest. Now Jesus went through a lot of pain and suffering while He was on earth. And if he was not fully human, he would not have experienced what we go through of our struggles. Hebrews 2 verse 18 says, For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. And later, in the end of chapter 4, it goes on by saying, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. To fulfill God's promises. God always keeps His promises. Everything around us always changes and it is uncertain. But God never changes. Proverbs 30 verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him. Now Jesus fulfilled around 300 prophecies from the Old Testament. And some of these are very specific prophecies. For example, there's over 20 just within the 24 hours of Jesus' crucifixion. It was prophesied that Jesus would be deserted by His disciples, that He would be falsely accused, brutally beaten, that He would not retaliate. He would be executed with criminals. His hands and feet would be pierced. His bones would not be broken. They would gamble for His clothes. His mother would be a virgin. 
the exact place of his birth. Now there's a lot more, but you get the point. Jesus Christ is the only religious founder, compared to other religious founders, that could claim anything like this. Because God made these promises hundreds of years before Jesus came down to earth as a human. And they all came true. And Jesus himself is the promise of the Messiah that would come from the line of David and come to save the world. And Jesus himself said, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And Jesus loves you so much that He died in your place. He took all your sins on Him as punishment and He suffered so that you don't have to. And all He asks is that you love Him, that you accept Him as Lord and Savior of your life. It is His gift to you. And now you know why Jesus came to earth as a human in the flesh. It is the biggest miracle that this world has ever seen. And it has the power to save our lives. Now remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life.